Good evening, YouTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video since my wife's at work. I'm here by myself. Uh, earlier, I was watching BookTube, watching videos, and I thought I'd make a video even though it's not been 24 hours. But there's some things I want to show, things I want to talk about. First of all, it is September the, the 18th. It is 8.34 at night here in West Michigan. It's really a nice night. The house is all opened up. I can hear the crickets. And yeah, so I thought I'd make a video. I, I mentioned I got books in the mail yesterday in my last video on university press tags. There was one book that I forgot to show in the university press tag. And because it was on my desk, and it wasn't downstairs. I forgot about it. And it's this book, it's called Sin, A History by Gary A. Anderson. And this is published by Yale University Press. It was published in 2009. I just thought if those people out there who are interested in reading a history of sin, you might like this book. When I was, before I started making this video, I was looking at these verses and um, in the New Testament in 1 John, it says, um, in the first chapter of the God, not the Gospel of John, the Epistle of John, the first Epistle of John. Many years ago when we lived in Houston, Texas and I did my internship, I could, I had to preach once a month. <laughs> uh, I taught adult Sunday school too and, but I preached to first, the first Epistle of John. So, and I haven't really, <laughs> really read anything I think since then and that was back in the 80s when we lived in Texas because we lived here in Holland going on 28 years now. Anyway it says in 1st John chapter 1 starting at verse 5 this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So that's what I was thinking about when I saw this book, Sin, A History. If we say that we have no sin and we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So uh, first book I got in the mail yesterday, I had pre-ordered this. This is Participating in Christ, the Explorations in Paul's Theology and Spirituality by Michael J. Gorman. I read all Michael J. Gorman's books. I was going to bring them out here. They're in my main study, but I didn't want to do that, make this video too long. But this is his newest book, and I was reading it today for devotions, really enjoying it. And then I got in the mail Susan Santang's Her Life and Work by Benjamin Moser. This is the new biography on Susan Santang. And I have, I think I did a video showing you my collection of the writings of Susan Santang, her novels, her essays, her journals. I thought of it showing those again, but once again, I don't want to make this video long, but I have always been fascinated with her since I saw her on TV and listen to her on the radio back in the 60s and so I've always been kind of interested in her as a writer, as a thinker, as a woman. 
And so I got this biography of her. So I, I don't plan to get into it right now because I'm reading other things. And I don't want to overwhelm myself with too much reading. It's an interesting photo of her. Susan Santang. I like her. So I got that in the mail. Look forward to reading about her life and maybe getting back into her writings. I always want to read her novels, which I haven't read in a while. As far as what I've been reading, well, I did, I had to go and get milk <laughs> at a local grocery store. And I, I go right by Goodwill thrift store and I went in and I found, I don't know how many copy, copies of Flanagan's Wake. I think I have two. Now I have three. I had the, I didn't know if I had this paperback, this Penguin edition of Flanagan's Wake by James Joyce. But I'll put it in the van, a roving, the roving library in the van. It's only 65 cents. <laughs> and it goes back here, it was $17 when it was at Calvin College Books. <laughs> Must have been a textbook for, because Calvin College is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So it must have been a textbook. Um, wish I had sat in that class. I'd like to sit in the class with a professor who was an authority on Flanagan's Wake and James Joyce and just sit there and just go through this book with him. It'd be really cool. Now, I've tried to read this over the years and failed. Same thing with Ulysses, I failed. I have read The Dubners and The Artist as a Young Man. I read that many years ago, but as you all know, I have a huge James Joyce collection. So I was reading uh, today. I was reading after I read in the mornings that book on participation in Christ. I read The Cold Warriors, Writers Who Wage a Literary Cold War by Duncan White. This is really good. I, I highly recommend it if you... Uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's like reading a novel almost. But uh, I'm really enjoying this. I, in this book today, I was reading, a, uh, it mentions Hemingway and his, when he was, uh, if you know anything about Ernest Hemingway, he was a journalist and he got himself involved in going to the front in the Second World War. And he was involved, he came around the liberation of Paris at, uh, when the Nazis were defeated. And he came into Paris with a friend of his named David, uh, David Bruce. Well, I kept coming across here in the Cold Warriors, this David Bruce with Hemingway and they were friends and I went on the internet trying to find more information about David Bruce and who this person was and I realized that I have a biography of him in our library, The Last American Aristocrat, The Biography of Ambassador David K. E. Bruce by M Nelson N. Langford. And it says right here in the cover, born into Virginia Gentry, David K. F. Bruce was, in the words of his brother-in-law, Paul Mellon, the very epitome of the Greek heiress, handsome, brilliant, entirely at ease with his own wealth, and fabulous Mellon riches. He was a perfect young dilettante, but as he matured and World War II loomed, he devoted himself to public service and to turning American foreign policy from isolationism to world leadership. During the war, he headed the OSS spy operation in London, and with his pal, Ernest Hemingway, was among the first Americans to enter Paris. After the war, he headed the Marshall Plan in France, and then became ambassador to France during the critical years when it seemed that France might turn to communism. So I got this out to look at it. And then I've been reading, I'm going to be reading tonight, well, I read this evening, uh, Stephen Spender's Journals, 1939 to 1983, edited by John Goldsmith. And then I'm going to read tonight after I 
finish filming this video. Ducks Newsbury Report by Lucy Elman. So yeah, these, this is what I'm reading. This is what I got in the mail. This is uh, whatever. But one thing I wanted to talk about was just to share my thoughts. There's a tube going around in BookTube called Who Are Your Favorite Writers? And it's been kind of obsessing me because I can't think of anybody as far as writers. Now I have writers that I like and that I read, but I can't come up with any favorite writers. And I can't, I don't know why. Now you all know I collect writers. And that's another problem. How can you say that this writer is your favorite writer if you've not read all their writings? You know what I'm saying? Like look at Ernest Hemingway. And I have never read Ernest Hemingway. I've read about him. I've read things about him being in Paris. I've read about him being in Spain in the, in the Spanish Civil War. And, but I've never read his writings. Same as James Joyce. How can I say James Joyce is my favorite writer when I've not read Ulysses or Flanagan's Wait? Well, as you all know, I collect the writings of Jace, Joyce Carol Oates, but I've not read all her writings, which are, I think I have 40 books by Joyce Carol Oates. So how can I say with honesty that Joyce Carol Oates is one of my favorite writers? And then as a Christian, how can I, you know, there's certain writers that lived very immoral lives. Now, maybe their writings are not to be judged by their, a writer's ethical life. But yeah, I'm always struggling with as a Christian, how do you, how do you, promote or advocate or recommend a certain book or writer if you know that what they are writing about or their lifestyle is a life of sin, a life of, of rebelling against God. I mean, then you have a problem with that. As you all know, I collect William Voldman, but is he my favorite writer? Well, I haven't read everything that he has written. And so I always have a problem with that. And now I have favorite spiritual writers, and I've mentioned those like St. John the Cross and, and the Carthusians and the Puritans. I've mentioned Thomas Goodwin and John Owen and Richard Baxter and Thomas Matton and Thomas Watson and Richard Sibbs and John Flavel, but are those my favorite writers? I don't really know. I mean, when it comes right down to it, I just don't really can make it, you know, and I don't know why. I, it kind of puzzles me. To, I watch booktube videos and people who do that tag, my favorite writers, and they're able to list them. You know, their least favorite in the middle and then their five top favorite writers. Like, you know, I, I collect John Updike. I, you know, I, re I read John Updike, you know, pretty consistently over the years. I like Saul Billow. <laughs> I like uh, Philip Roth. I like, uh, you know, people like that. I like Aris, uh, 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 what was it? Aris Murdoch and people like that. But I haven't read all their writings, so how can I say that they're my favorite writers. Now, even if I would recommend their writings, I don't know. See, you know, things like that. And I don't know why I struggle with this. It just, but this booktube has provoked this kind of thoughts in my mind about what is my favorite writers. I don't know. Now, I am enjoying Doc's Newbury Report by Lucy Elman. Now, would I recommend somebody going out and spending $25 for this book. If I don't know, if somebody wanted something good to read and a recommendation, I would recommend Duck's Newbury Report by Lucy Elman, but I couldn't say this is my one of my favorite writers. 
I mean, I'm really enjoying S Stephen Spender's journals, 1939 to 1983, and I'm supposed to get a biography on his life in the mail any day. And I'm really enjoying these journals. It's great writing, uh, very, it's nonfiction, it's journals written about at the end of the war. He's in Germany, he's interviewing uh, librarians and academics and how the Nazis, how it affected them and how Germany's recovering after the war and the Nazis and, and people trying to figure out what they're going to do next is very interesting. And I'm really enjoying the Cold Warriors. I mean, but would I, you know, would I recommend this book? Well, if you want a good nonfiction book and something about writers during the Cold War, yeah, I mean, but I don't know. This book will cost you, I don't know, I got it for $20, $22. So I don't know. I think it retails for $32.50 in a, like a Barnes and Noble, anyway. So things like that I struggle with. So I don't know. So tell me your thoughts. I mean, do, do you struggle over what, listing what your least favorite writers and your middle favorite writers and then your top five, five favorite writers? I just, I have a hard time. So yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying a morning in the morning reading and participating in Christ. Explorations in Paul's Theology and Spirituality by Michael Jay Gorman, and I look forward to getting into Susan Santang's biography. And yeah, so I just want to share these thoughts. Like I said, it is a Wednesday. Tomorrow is a Thursday. I might go to thrift stores tomorrow. I don't know. I've been kind of feeling kind of icky lately, kind of just want to sit around the house and, and read and write and ponder. And the, you know, when it's kind of nice out and it's sunny, and these these autumn days, almost early autumn days, it's just kind of like you just want to sit and ponder. But I do recommend, I read this book a number of years ago, Sin, A History, by Gary Anderson. So, so I'll close. I thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. Do pray you're all doing well. And share any thoughts you have about my favorite writers. I mean, do you have the struggle? I don't, know. I don't know. Plus, you know, to be honest, most of my Christian life I've read Christian books. Systematic theology, biblical theology, New Testament theology, Pauline, books on, Christ on prayer, books on things like that. And so I don't really have, you know, 40 years of reading just literary works or non-Christian books. Maybe that's the problem. And plus, I like non-fiction books. I like reading like The Cold Warriors. I'm really enjoying this. And I like reading biographies. And I like reading about art and music and American history and, and uh, things like that. So anyway, I'll stop my rambling, I'll sign off, and until next time, bye.